What is up, Dan? How are you today, sir? Very good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome to the Market Report. Uh, we are happy to have you here today. I know we have some burning questions for you to get your insights about what's happening in the market. Uh, so just kind of kicking things off here, like what is your overall sentiment right now uh, in regards to the crypto market? Where do you see Bitcoin heading here in the days and weeks ahead? So I'm a bit cautious on uh, Bitcoin in the short term here. Over the next couple of weeks, we've made this 70% move from 29 straight up to 65, or not 65, straight up to the 50s with a lack of weekly consolidation. So every week's a high or low, and it's just been impressive and really frustrating for the bears every leg up that we see. But we're getting to a point where I'm expecting an equilibrium pattern on the monthly time frame, and an equilibrium is just a pattern of higher lows and lower highs and a tightening range. And I'm anticipating that we're going to be looking for a lower high compared to the all-time high initially. And just, just watching the pattern of you know, the last five weeks, we've had a, a green day every single Friday. And that probably has to do a bit with options expiration that Marcel was talking about. And just watching for some short term patterns to shift to lead to some weekly consolidation, which would be healthy, bigger picture to cool things off a little bit. Right on. Now, what is what is going to push Bitcoin like past 50K in your opinion? Is it going to be some sort of like catalytic event or is it going to be kind of several events that kind of all pair together? Like where, what are your thoughts on something like that? So 50,000 is definitely a short term resistance level. And I don't think it's going to take, you know, you don't need a news event to get over 50. But if we're talking a new all time high, I think you're going to need a catalyst to see an increase in volume. Because if we're going to get over 65 from here, it's going to have to be on the backs of a very notable volume. And as you mentioned previously, the potential for the ETF, I think that could be a catalyst that could do it. But in the absence of a catalyst, I'm looking for that lower high compared to the all time high and a, a tightening range towards the end of the year. Very good. Now, are we in an alt season right now? What are your kind of thoughts about that? I guess that depends on what the definition of alt season is. But sure. the, the pattern that we've seen since Bitcoin hit the new all time high over 20,000 is essentially that when the altcoin market is strong, it shows confidence in the entire cryptocurrency space. So I personally am a more confident Bitcoin bull when I'm looking and seeing all these other altcoins essentially stronger and leading the way. So I guess you could call that an alt season. You know, we've got names like Cardano and we got Sol and they're hitting all time highs. And that definitely, again, it just breeds confidence when there's profits flowing in the space. People are just moving their profits around one coin to the other. And it's this perpetual confidence, essentially. So I think it's a good thing for the, the crypto space as a whole. And again, I, I want to see the altcoins leading the way to have uh, confidence in the strength of the entire sector. Dan, Dan, I, 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 I kind of disagree with you on that because Whenever we see a local top on BTC, okay, it tested 50,000, now it's back to 47, so we failed to breach the 50,000. I think that people move their money out of Bitcoin to altcoins. So you see an altcoin rally, but it's not uh, that market is gaining confidence, in my view. It's just opposite. People don't see uh, uh, upside for Bitcoin in the short term, so they, they're going to risk on altcoins. Don't you think that what's usually happening? I don't. I, I think that when there is a lack of confidence in Bitcoin, when it starts to show a little bit of signs of weakness and a little bit of fear out there, that altcoins generally are dropping harder. And you know they've run harder, they've established less support on the way up. And so you'll see the dominance chart of Bitcoin generally is going to be going up when the cryptocurrency space as a whole is dropping. And that shows me that the altcoins are dropping harder than Bitcoin is. So I think that there's the most confidence in Bitcoin so I see that people flee all coins when there's any kind of fear entering the space. Fascinating. Now, what are some of the biggest threats uh, of to, to like some of the larger cap cryptos right now? Is there any threats really? Honestly, one of the biggest threats that I see in crypto that I'm always watching for is fear in the stock market. I'm watching for the correlation mm. of that fear because when fe fear is this, you know, it's it's it supersedes everything. It just, it hits all markets. And back in, when we saw the COVID dump, we saw Bitcoin dump, we saw metals dump, everything was dumping. So when there is a prevailing fear in the stock market world, crypto definitely drops with it. And that's something I'm always watching for. And, and we know the stock market has been on absolute fire since that COVID low. Every dip kept, keeps being bought, but I'm always watching. I'm watching for that fear and I know that it will very likely impact Bitcoin and the crypto space. And again, we're talking short term, you know, the end of the, the COVID dump, the crypto space recovered significantly.
but it's that short term correlation of everything where the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater. And that's what I'm watching <laughs> for for the next very significant dip in the crypto space. I think it would be accompanied by a significant dip in the stock market. It's, what is what is fueling the stock market right now? Like in years past, like some argue that it's been like quantitative easing. Um, like what is fueling this continuous rally going up and up and up and up and up? And is there going to be an end to it? Oh, that's what everybody points to. Everybody points to, you know, the Fed. Oh, it's, it's a manipulated market, the Fed. Honestly, I don't care why it's going up. I just care that it's going up. And <laughs> I'm going to continue to trade with the trend as long as that's the case. And we know that when we have these slow grinds up that are just continuous, that when they end, they end fast and hard and seemingly out of nowhere. So definitely want to be paying attention to that. But again, I, I don't care. You know, I, I put out my YouTube videos and every time people are commenting, it's fake, it's manipulated. I just don't care. That doesn't make, mean anything to me. Exactly. But, I, no, I want to shift here. Go ahead. But if the Fed says, okay, we, we're going to start tapering, we're going to start not buying monthly assets anymore, the market, uh, the exact moment be, enters in panic, in fear mode. D don't you think that could drive both S&P and cryptocurrencies prices down? Definitely. And we're starting to get that. You know, they're starting to change their language a little bit. And they're starting to throw those keywords out there to almost, you know, get us ready for it a little bit. But with where we stand right now, the S&P 500, it hasn't seen any monthly consolidation. And I'm talking about the monthly time frame where every candle is one month. It hasn't seen cons consolidation on that time frame in something like nine months. And so we know it's due, you know, and the next time the S&P 500 sees monthly consolidation, it won't surprise me in the slightest. I know it's going to happen at any point. So I'm, I'm ready for that. And it was the same thing with Bitcoin. When Bitcoin was running up to 65,000, I started getting cautious, granted a little bit early. You know, I was scaling out upper 40s, low 50s, but it was because the monthly time frame was so extended that I knew monthly consolidation is inevitable and just being prepared for it. So I am definitely prepared for monthly consolidation in the S&P 500. And whether it's not, whether or not it's, you know, tapering that is the reason for it, it definitely could be. It is something to be paying attention to for the cryptocurrency space as well. It's something I'm always telling people in my videos, if you're trading crypto, keep an eye on the stock market. And what are maybe some signals that, that you would see uh, from the stock market that would be like, hey, that's a giant red flag. Like that's, a, that's something huge I should definitely track. Volume. I mean, volume, you can't go down. The S&P 500, and I'm talking about, you know, SPY, the ETF that tracks it, it can go up on very low volume. It just grinds higher and higher, but it can't go down without a big spike in volume. So you keep an eye out mm. for that volume. And I watch the major sectors because the S&P 500 has had this beautiful rotation going on where it's just, you know, the tech sector is going up and financials are consolidating and then they flip. And so I'm watching for when all of our major sectors, the tech sector, financial sector, the healthcare sector, if they're dropping at the same time, that tells me this isn't rotation. This is money leaving the market. So I'm watching mm. all the little components of the broader market for clues as to whether it's just the continued healthy rotation or whether it's something different. Yeah, those are excellent insights. Now, I, I want to kind of shift gears from Bitcoin over to maybe some altcoins. Uh, are there a particular set of, of tokens that you are extremely bullish on right now? And if so, why? So as a trader, I fundamentals are at the bottom of my reason for trading. I'm a very much leaning technical trader, <laughs> Marcel. Uh, so for me, honestly, when something's in blue sky breakout, that is when I'm, I'm most interested in terms of trading it. And we have a trade. I love playing bounces. So there's a trade that I call the back burner trade, which is just if something is at all time highs, the first five minute oversold bounce, the first hourly oversold bounce generally have very significant gains. It's a high probability trade. So if something's in blue sky and Cardano just had this happen within the past two days, it hit first hourly oversold conditions where the RSI is dipping below 30 and it has this very significant bounce. Now that's not to say that you're just blindly buying and, and you know, going head first in, you have to manage your risk as always but those are very high probability trades. So when something's in blue sky, it has my attention. And back in 2017, when I was first getting interested in crypto, it, you know, I read some articles and okay, a lot of this is over my head. I understand some of it, but I looked at the chart and I said, okay, Ethereum, blue sky, all time highs. I know what that means. And I have confidence in that technical setup. So that was a big reason for me getting involved with the space. Apart from yeah. the RSI, what what other indicators are you mo most frequently using for altcoins? Volume, RSI, and price levels, previous price supports. I also like uh, exponential moving averages. I like the 12 EMA a lot. 
and when things line up. So if you're getting first five minute oversold and the hourly is hitting hourly EMA 12 support, looking for a higher price level to form on the hourly, again, that's multiple things lining up that have that as a higher probability trade. Okay. Yeah, and I've watched uh, some of your AMAs and I love how you take this, this very like holistic approach uh, to trading. And it seems as though it's it's not just looking at numbers and charts, but it's also being in touch with the psychology, being in touch with yourself, your emotions, your environment. Uh, so like how important is that to you personally when you're doing daily trading? It's very important. I love that Jordan has a, a psychology background because I've always said psychologists would make really good traders. You know, learning technical analysis is one thing, the book learning part of things. And a lot of people can do that. But it's, it's really, I mean, it's a lifestyle. Trading is a lifestyle and you have to be balanced in so many aspects of your life to be able to do it successfully, consistently. And recognizing yourself and recognizing your ego and constant self-reflection are a huge part of evolving as a trader and constantly improving. Do you think most traders are successful in like managing those things? No, that's, that's why most people are not <laughs> successful traders. That is, that's the hardest part. And yes. it takes it takes a whole reworking of your lifestyle. You know, if you're if you get angry at people in traffic, you're not going to be a good trader. Yeah, I got some a background in psychology that didn't help me try and be a better trader. Like it's <laughs> mastering your own psychology and like not buying when the you oh I should buy it when it, you know you shouldn't. Like yeah, it's it's a tricky game. What are some of the characteristics that that you are constantly like working on uh, in regards to kind of like the mental game of of trading? Patience is a big one. And even outside the world of trading, uh, patience was one that I had to look to master. And then again, just self-reflection. So, you know, I'm not immune to these emotions. I feel FOMO. I can look at a chart exploding and feel FOMO, but it's, it's zooming out and recognizing I'm feeling FOMO. I probably shouldn't trade right now. And that's a, a really important aspect because if you have your blinders on and you're not, you know, zooming out and, and watching the thoughts that are occurring in your head, it's, it's how you're just suddenly placing a trade and how you have no game plan. And next thing you know, you're buying the top. So constant self-reflection. Now, is sometimes not making a trade the best trade? Absolutely. That is very often the, the best thing to be doing. You, you want to have a game plan established before you're ever entering a position. You want to know where you're looking to enter, where your stop loss is going to be, so you know your maximum risk and where your target's going to be. And you obviously want to ensure that your target has a greater value, you know, your reward is higher than your potential risk. And so you have to establish this trade game plan before you ever click the buttons. Because again, if you're just acting on impulse, you're acting on emotion and your emotions are guiding things. And you will find the more you watch markets that it's it's acting on the opposite emotions that you would normally be fe feeling that would be the best scenario. You know, when there is maximum fear, I love oversold bounces. It's one of my edges as a trader. And when there is maximum fear, that is when I am my most aggressive as far as looking at trades. And when there's maximum FOMO, it's when I'm trading a lot less. And like I said, I was I was scaling out a little bit too early on Bitcoin on this all time high run, but I was going to be darn sure that I was not holding when we saw that monthly consolidation take place. And are there any like basic uh, baseline tips or tricks for learning TA uh, to help anybody that's kind of just getting started here watching today? Stop loss on every trade. I mean, there are, I don't know any long-term successful trader that does not do this. And generally, I know that even though I can say that to people a hundred times, that they still will not do it. And they have to learn for themselves. They have to feel the pain in their stomach and they have to be sick. And, and that is something that is part of the path to becoming a trader. And you have to feel that enough to say, man, I don't ever want to feel that again. Well, if I just put a stop loss on every trade and I know my maximum risk on every trade, then that can be a, that that's a way to avoid that feeling. Are I was going to say, I, <laughs> go ahead. Are there any tokens aside from Bitcoin, Ethereum that you more like a long-term hold? I have, so, I have long-term no touch in Bitcoin, Ethereum, some link, and then some LTC from back in, in 2017. I'm not very hopeful for it, but I designate these things as no touch. Psychologically, that's very important for me. And I just account for them as $0. You know, they go to zero, it's zero and anything else that they're going to be in 10 years, great. And that's just a way because as a trader, when I'm constantly staring at the screen, I, it's hard for me to zoom out. You know, I'm looking at these, you know, five minute candles. I need to be looking at the decade long candles. So I have to designate those as no touch. Yeah, I, 
Well, I, I do want to kind of move us into our, our fire round for today. This is kind of a fun little segment where we kind of ask you just a gambit of random questions to get to know you, Dan. Uh, so I'm going to kind of fire away here. Uh, so how do you, what is like one thing that you do to deal with the stress of trading? What is like an hour for yourself? Gardening okay. outside. I love growing plants. Had a little farming background as I was learning to trade. And that is how I find balance. Okay. What's your favorite cheese? Favorite cheese. Oh, man. I guess I would go with Gouda. <laughs> Gouda cheese. All right. What is your price prediction for Bitcoin and Ethereum by the end of the year? End of the year? Well, I mean, I could give without a, an ETF catalyst, I think that we're going to see a tightening range. And I think maybe we'll be maybe in the in the 40,000s towards the end of the year. I think we set a monthly lower high. I think we pull back and set a higher low compared to 29 and look for things to continue tightening. If there's an ETF, Marcel, I'll give you, I'll give you an all-time high with an ETF. Now, if somebody offered you five Bitcoin or 75 ETH, which one are you taking today? I'm taking five Bitcoin. Fair enough. Are you a believer in social tokens? If so, why? Um, honestly, I, I, I don't I haven't looked into them enough to, to have a, a long-term uh viable opinion on them to be honest all right fair enough and last question here of the fire round and then we're done you're off the hot seat uh nfts are they going to be a boom or are they going to be a bust i think like like most altcoin projects where you see this you know huge rush and tons of things being established i think 98 percent are bust but there will be some booms very good. Well, this was Dan McDermott from the Chart Guys today. We really, really appreciate you coming on. This was awesome. Uh, we hope to have you on again. Thanks for joining us today, Dan. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Thank you, Dan. Awesome stuff. Uh, guys, if you have not liked and subscribed, it's, the time is now. Okay, it's never been a better time to like and subscribe to Cointelegraph's YouTube channel. Go do it. Hit the, hit the like button, smash that subscribe button, even turn on those notifications so you know every Thursday at 12 Eastern, we're here. We're here for you all.